Samuel of Gamulia Stadium. Aswa Igudalo. He joins me live from Benin City. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Good evening. Good evening. So your victory speech yesterday was full of gratitude to the party stakeholders, including Mr. Governor, and you acknowledge how much of an impossible task this was. You mentioned specifically that six months ago, everyone would have thought that you were smoking something to dare to join the race. It's a good place to start. How did you get this ticket at your first attempt? You know, some would say you have jumped the queue ahead of those you met at the party. Again, good evening, and thank you very much for having me. Um, really, yesterday I was humbled and um, full of gratitude. And I actually saw the impact of extreme hard work. Extreme hard work combing the length and breadth of the state and every blade of grass. Um, since I came into uh, the gubernatorial race, um, I have traveled nearly every day to all the nook and crannies of the state, to meet with world leaders, local government leaders, senatorial district leaders, individual elders and leaders of the party. And I've traveled across the country to meet with them. I have traveled across the state also to meet with the ordinary man and woman on the streets, to speak with them, um, to communicate with them, to tell them my thinking about a path to move Edo State into prosperity, to find out what their major issues are, and to um, give them hope, and to let them know that in full consideration of what their issues are, those are issues that we would resolve. So I just worked hard, worked my butt off, and I had an extremely good team that worked with me. So um, that, that's what I what I can um, what I can. Um, put down as being um, the major plank on which we succeeded yesterday. I hear you. You have mentioned that Governor Obaseki isn't your godfather, uh, that you guys have been friends for some 40 years, and that um, no one can impose a candidate Correct. on their door people. Well, you know, some would say there's no way you Correct. would have gotten the party's ticket without him, and that it's open secret you are his preferred aspirant. Uh, so, what does that make him? Mm. A, a benefactor? Someone who was instrumental mm. to you learning the political ropes and opening the doors? Or how much role are you willing to acknowledge he played in all of these? Everybody keeps talking about um, it being an open secret, keeping my political godfather. Um, and I'll come back to what I've always told people. You know, um, there are at least three or four aspirants that were in the field that are very close friends of um, Governor Basic. So I kept wondering why people kept pointing at me as being his uh, preferred uh, candidate or he being my godfather. Again, I reiterate this. Governor Basic and I are very good friends. We respect each other tremendously. We've worked together on the economic team of Comrade Oshomole. I have also worked on Alagodaro as the chairman of Alagodaro since 2016. Um, in the private sector, we worked on opposite sides of transactions and sometimes we work together. So we know each other well and we respect each other. But having said that, my stepping into the race had nothing to do with him. Um, when I stepped into the race, I was persuaded to come into this race by different kinds of adults, sons and daughters, elderly, young people, professionals, non-professionals. And each time they kept talking to me at first, the first set of rules that came to me, I immediately pushed them back because that wasn't what I'd envisaged for myself. And I thought I was quite comfortable where I was in the private sector. But as many more people came to talk to me about this, I then started having playbacks as to the role of public office um, in doing substantive good for the majority of the people. And I remembered my period on the board of the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority when we worked on a number of infrastructure projects and restructuring of the fertilizer market for the federal government and the completion of Lagos Ibadan Express Road, the second Niger Bridge, when we were involved in building the best cancer center in Africa. And I saw that the power of public office could do so much good to so many more people. Um, I'd always known that, but I saw the effect firsthand. Um, and I saw that no matter which of the private sector entities I was involved in, at best, directly and indirectly, 
that affect positively the lives of 10,000 people. Um, if by the grace of God, you know, and the goodwill of the people of Edo State, I'm appointed as the governor of Edo, I'm elected as the governor of Edo State, mm. then I'll be affecting the lives of 5 million odd people. And so if, when you start thinking in that dimension, it's actually a no-brainer. So it became easier for me to come to terms with the fact that I could serve in public office and I could give up my life as comfortable and as, uh, and as um, I'd already gotten used to that life over 40 years working. You know? So as I was in a safe zone, you know, and I thought, yes, okay, I'll take that risk. You know? And I started looking at all the work I'd done in the economic team. I was chairman of Nigeria Economic Summit Group, and I knew I had a lot to offer. I saw a path for the state um, with significant hard work, um, with all the good efforts, with creative thinking, with creative youth talent, women talent, all hands on board, diaspora support, diaspora talent. Um, I see a path for those state to move with, from poverty into pros prosperity. And so, in that belief, I stepped out. All right. um, in that belief that I knew I would contribute significantly to um, the development of the state. And one step more. I know that if we have a continent of states, you know, or a constellation of states who are doing well, then it will be easier for the country as a whole to develop faster. I tell you, sounds you know, like you're saying yeah. you have, you feel that you can impact more, you know, in public service, you know, yeah, outside no, your definitely. private life. All right, um, yeah. but let's talk about the politics behind all of this, because PDP won in 2020 mm -hmm. largely because of the division within the ruling APC at the time. And some would say it seems your party is towing that path. The legacy group has now metamorphosed into legacy coalition. Uh, what are your plans to get some of these aspirants, um, you know, if not all, on your side? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, that's, that's the goal, that's the target. Um, since we finished the primaries yesterday, I've started the process of reaching out even before the primaries, I've been reaching out to a lot of my co-aspirants and some of the people that are deemed or termed legacy people. I think we've done much better um, in the last two months than where we were in November. I think the party is getting closer and closer together. We understand that it's imperative that we go into the September elections as one united party. It's imperative. And we're working hard at it because there's... Um, a strong determination on the part of all party members to continue serving the people of um, Edo State. Um, and so we're working very hard. Um, we're, we're in the process. You know, there are different reconciliation teams that are working hard. I am working very hard. I keep talking to people. Uh, I, keep, I keep trying to convince people as to the importance of us working as one united team. And we'll get there. Um, uh, many homes have their own problems, but the important thing is that the homes know how to resolve those problems and come back stronger and, and it, more unified. A, name, a, name, a particular name stands out from the opposition within your party. Um, the deputy governor mm -hmm. leads the legacy coalition. I, I spoke with him on the program yesterday, and he mentioned yeah. that the delegates who voted for him at the parallel primary are the authentic delegates and that for PDP to have a candidate in this election, it has to be him, except the party doesn't want to field a candidate. You know, he sounded very confident, like someone who had proof and evidence to back his claims. Does this bother you? No, it doesn't at all. Um, these are minor issues as far as I'm concerned that the party hierarchy will deal with, the NWC will deal with those issues. I, 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 I see that we went through a proper process um, we went through the constitution of the party, the laid down guidelines, the NWC conducted elections. We had our ward congresses on the 4th of February, and the three ad hoc delegates were selected for each ward. And then we had the national delegates congresses on the 10th of February, where one in each of the local governments was selected. And all of these delegates were validated and confirmed by the uh, National Working Committee of our party. Mm. And that this was then published in two or three national dailies, and, was, and the list was circulated. And that's the authentic list. And that was the list by which delegates were accredited yesterday. And if you, um, if you were at the, the uh, Ugoi Stadium 
you would see that each delegate had a tag, and that tag had their name, their full names, and their photograph issued from the national headquarters of the party. And the accreditation was done by officials of the, of the party from the National Working Committee. The, the electoral committee was headed by Governor Dauda Lawal of Tampara State and co-chaired by Governor Sheriff of Delta State. And the committee had preeminent Nigerians of the PDP, senior advocates of Nigeria, former senators, uh, former House of Reps members, senior party members, and they were all um, in situ. And that was the process that we um, went through yesterday. Um, and there was transparency through the process. Governor Lawal and Governor Sharif both acknowledged the process has been fully fair and okay. transparent. Okay. We, used, we used electoral materials that were opened up mm. straight from the National Working Committee. So um, I don't know what list anybody else used, but the list that came from the National Working Committee and was published in national newspapers by the National Working Committee is indeed the authentic list. I know you stopped being a litigation lawyer many years ago, but you know, as a yes, corporate sir. lawyer of repute, you probably should get ready. You know, from what the deputy governor said yesterday, you probably should also, you know, get ready to um, iron this out at the court. But, you know, they say no one goes into politics if they don't want to be abused. Let me get a reaction to what mm. some, some people are saying. Um, what do you say, for instance, to those who have said, Edo doesn't want it Godalo uh, because he isn't um, a homeboy. You know, some have even made reference to the fact that um, you were using an interpreter to address your kinsmen. Again, <clears throat> when people want to um, distract all of us, they throw all these things in the mix. Um, I don't know how much of an homeboy anybody can say I am or I'm not, because I grew up in Benin, I grew up in New Benin, I grew up in Oslo. My father lived here for eight or nine years, and all my holidays were spent with my father. Uh, or, um, apart from that, Christmas and Easter we spent in the whole evening. Um, the other day, my brother went back to our old house and ran into some of the families that um, were our neighbors there. Um, so I played football and I did Polo Grammar School, played by Popa River, you know, had friends, followed my father to the main club when he was playing billiards. You know, the other day I was showing some guys my father's old office. We used to go to the office with him and sit around with him. Um, so, and in my adult life, since 2008, I've been in and out of Benin, um, in the economic team of uh, Comrade Oshomole, and then in Alago Daro. And I have friends here. I come here to see my friends, many friends. I come in and out of Benin all the time. So I honestly don't understand that tag. And I don't think that's the issue. I think it's also a distraction. I think we have so many um, Edo State citizens all over Nigeria mm -hmm. who have left home for different reasons of work or study. And different of those state citizens all over the all over the world, all over, doing extremely and excellently well. Now, what do we want to do? We want to stop them from coming home to contribute their quota, or we want to stop them from coming to Benin to contribute their quota. So I really don't understand this. What is going to develop at those states is a combination of the efforts of all of those citizens from wherever they may be, pulling together tremendous talent and the tremendous resources that I know we have. That is how Edo State is going to move very quickly mm -hmm. from the third world state we are in into the first world. If people think that they just want to keep this to those who have this uh, only Benin experience or only Edo State experience, then we won't go as fast as we should grow and as quickly as we should grow. And we probably won't have access to the resources we require to grow. Mm -hmm. So if I we have... want to move at a big pace yes. huh, and we want to develop, mm -hmm. then all hands must be on deck. And that's the way I see it. I... You know, um, when, when people want to distract and want to murky the waters, they throw all these mm. things around. Um, so that's my stand on this. I understand I that position, that, but, but you, know, you, can, you can also shy away from the deep-seated sentiment. Um, for instance, the candidate of the APC has now also emerged from Edo Centra, and I'm sure you follow the sentiment and growing advocacy that the next governor should come you know, from the ASEAN people. So it's looking and it's sounding like you now have to contend for that home support with other candidates with this new development, right? That's right. And I don't have any, I don't have any problems or fears about that. 
What we are going to do um, in the PDP, uh, working very hard and working well, will be to sell our policies um, to our people and to tell our people how we're able to put more money in their pockets, remove suffering from the land, move them from poverty to prosperity, build infrastructure, build, uh, provide security, um, build a strong, a strong, viable economy. I've already started working out how we're going to do this, you know. And we will sell it. The other day I was in the marketplace, and many of the women I was talking to were asking me, you know, we've heard this thing before, what's different this time? You know, and those were the questions we needed to answer to convince people that, yes, you know, we have a, we have a story to tell, and we have work to do, and this is how we will do the work. So I'm not, you know, I, I didn't expect that we would have candidates that are not good candidates coming out of the other parties. Mm -hmm. I didn't join this race to think that it would be um, an easy, an easy sale. It's not going to be. Each of the parties have very good candidates, extremely good candidates and competent candidates. And so we will all have to step out and provide the electorate with the opportunity to select who they think is best suited for the circumstances of now in the state and who has the capability, the experience, the reach, the contacts, the connect, and the friendships and the ability and the capacity for hard work. Yes. And so that's the story we're going to tell All right. uh, the people of Edo State. And the people of Edo State, I have said this over and over, they're discerning people. Um, the people of Edo State, uh, they are literate, they understand political issues, um, and they vote in accordance to what they believe is in their best interest. And they look at fairness, equity, and justice. Mm. So I'm not, I'm, I, I, this is not a tea party. It's going to be extremely hard work. We've worked extremely hard in the last four or five months. We're going to continue working very hard right up until the last day we're able to campaign. So I'm sure that we have um, yeah. enough time yeah. in the future to talk, um, you know, more deeply about your plans in this regard. Uh, but earlier you talked yeah. about um, seeing the larger picture as the reason for running for governor. I saw that interview That's you right. had with RMD, uh, where you talked about all of the mm -hmm. hard work and consistency you've put into growing one of the leading Nigerian law firms. And, you know, I'm just wondering, I'm just curious to know how easy that decision was for you to leave all of that behind and to, you know, <laughs> go into politics, so to speak. No, it was one of, it's probably the hardest decision of my life. Probably the hardest. Um, as you know, I was, I was chair of Nigerian Breweries, chair of Sterling Bank, chair of Levin Oil, chair of Global Mix, chair of three or four other companies, I was the board of Cardinal Stone, for more oil, I was on the board of six or seven other companies. And I was part of probably the biggest law, or one of the biggest law firms in Africa, involved in significant transactions and deals. A few days after I stepped down from the office, we were closing one of the biggest um, oil and gas acquisitions in Africa you know, uh, at which I had to step off. Um, we're also closing one of the other big manufacturing transactions, another acquisition transaction, which I also had to step off, you know. Um, and then there's the issue of the dislocation of family, family life, um, mm. new friends and things, you know. So it's probably the hardest decision, but I prayed about it. Mm. I spoke with my, with my family um, about it. Um, we took time to think about it, spoke to a few friends I respected, particularly some elders. And everybody at the end of the day, after the initial pushback, that what are you looking for? You're, you've got a good life, you're comfortable, everything is going well for you. When people sat down to think about it, um, I think everybody gravitated towards where I started from, which is the ability to do a lot for a lot of people through public office, mm -hmm. especially through elected public office, as the governor of a state, and the state is really closer to the grassroots. And if you get it right at state level, and there's a lot of peer support and peer pressure, other states surrounding, other states in the country would also start pulling up, and that can help pull the country up. All right. So all those arguments convinced my immediate stakeholders, mm. and they then supported me and gave me the go-ahead and, and prayed for me. I and hear so, you. So, um, yes, I, a very, I, very difficult. I don't need to journey. ask but how how the transition is like, because you're already talking like a politician yourself. But we're running out of time. We have to no, go now. Um, the, transition, the transition, let me answer that quickly. The transition has been really difficult. But okay. um, in a way, mm. going out to meet people every day, to meet, the, the mom, to meet moms and dads, and to meet poor and the rich, and to meet politicians and non-politicians, has also been a great experience for me. Okay? Mm. An experience that, honestly, I wouldn't have given up for all the gold in the world. You know, so, 
so yeah, it's been tough, mm. tough experience, tough transition, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to it. We have to go now, but in just one minute, let's talk about the politics of who your uh, running mate will be. I'm sure a lot of people ah. have been submitting their names now. Is that a decision you have made? And uh, perhaps you want to open up that to us on, yeah. <laughs> on TVC News. I, I, ironically, a lot of people haven't submitted their names. But, you know, frankly, that's truly a decision of the party and a decision of the elders of the party and the party. Um, I guess we'll all sit down and we'll look at who is best suited in the circumstances of where we sit today. Um, who has, who's going to bring the greatest value? Um, who's going to be a good complement and a good fit? Somebody who has the same ethos and ethics, hard work, integrity. But do you have because a zone? Do you have a senatorial love, zone love, in mind? Do you have a zone uh, in mind? There are, there are two other senatorial zones. There's the north and there's the south. You know, so we look at the person that best fits the bill at the point in time. Um, definitely the person's integrity level and work ethic must be fully top-notch, transparency, and ability to work in a team. Um, it's important to learn to work in a team, and important to also be able to understand what issues of loyalty and integrity and conviviality are. For me, uh, a team player would, is a must, you know, and somebody whose ego level is at uh, normal levels. In it. Um, so that's the key. Um, so I, I think, um, like I said, the party will sit down, we'll discuss all, all of right. that, and the party will make its recommendations. All right. Hopefully we'll have yeah. uh, more of these conversations before September. Uh, PDP candidate. Definitely. If you, if you invite me, and I you know, look forward if to you, it. If you pick the call. <laughs> of, course you, of course you know I will. Of course you know I will. PDP I candidate will. in Edo State. Aswa Igudalo, thank you for talking to us. Thank you so much for having me, and have a wonderful weekend. You too. And that's our program today, everyone. Thanks for being a part of it. You can watch it again at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow.